Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Slayer back here again with another video. I'm a recovering alcoholic. Tomorrow will make two weeks that I have sober and I make these videos not only to help myself stay sober, but also to help you guys out there stay sober as well. Um, right off the bat, man, I just wanted to say thank you um, and shout out to every single one of you guys that commented on the last video, why I relapsed. Just the amount of love and support was absolutely beautiful. Also, thank you to every single one of you that went over to Sage's channel and checked her videos out and subscribed to her. Also, shout out to you, Sage. Salute to you for actually, you know, having the courage to sit down and, you know, make some YouTube videos and share your experiences. That's what this is all about, man. Spreading awareness about this insane, insane topic that your everyday average Joe just doesn't know anything about, man. I didn't realize how just effing insane alcohol is until I became an alcoholic. I even had alcoholics around me. I didn't realize just how crazy alcohol is. So, and I encourage any of you guys to do the same thing that Sage did. Any one of you guys can create a YouTube channel, sit down and talk to your camera, share your experiences. It's therapeutic. It really helps, man. It really does. I get comments on the daily saying that, you know, I don't, you know, a lot of people don't feel comfortable going to AA or some people don't have the money to spend thousands of dollars on some expensive like program to go into. And they tell me that like my videos or LD's videos, liver disease, shout out to liver disease or some other individuals videos, you know, that is their AA. That is their therapy. That is, that's exactly why I started this channel, man. It's helping me just as much as it's helping you guys. This community is beautiful. I just, I can't say it enough. I know that in like every single one of my videos, I talk about this, but it's just so true. It's a beautiful community, man. And I, I just, I thank you guys. And any one of you guys that want to create a YouTube channel and try this out, man, do it. Trust me. It, it, it will help you. It really will. Um, a little bit about what's going on in my life, man. Uh, let me get, just give you guys an update real quick. Uh, I have been busy, busy, busy. And uh, I'm back to working six days a week. Yeah, man, six days a week I work. I work nights. Um, it's just a lot, man. It's just a lot. But that's good for me. I prefer working that much. It's good for my brain. It's just a little rough when you come off of a bender, you know, jumping back into six days of work. Because even though I've been, um, you know, oh, I see a hair. Even though I have two weeks of sobriety tomorrow, I still feel like I'm recovering, guys. It's like my relapses are so bad anymore. That's what happens when I drink. And even though it only lasted five to six days, it's been two weeks now and I'm still not feeling 100%. It'll probably take me like a month before I feel 100%. I got my strength back. I got my, my wits back. You know, my brain just, my brain always feels a little fried after I, I drank like that, especially nowadays, man. It's just so bad for you. Um, but yeah, man, I've been working six days a week. Uh, I am getting into an IOP program uh, that's three days a week. Nothing, I actually decided to step back. I was gonna do something that was five days a week, like six hours a day, and it's like, there's no way I'm gonna be able to make that work. Uh, I mean, I could have, no excuses, man, no excuses. You know, it's, this is the reason that I haven't uploaded a video, and I kind of feel the same way about uploading the videos, guys, no excuses. I should have already had a video up. I'm sorry about that. You know, I know a lot of people like count on our videos, and I should have had a video up by now. Um, anyways, but yeah, man. It's just been really busy and I'm gonna be starting an IOP program. It's three days a week. I decided not to do five days a week, six hours. It just wouldn't have worked. Um, but it's three days a week, like three hour sessions. And my plan is, is to kind of transition after that because I think it's like a 10 week program. After I'm done with that, I'm gonna find like just one AA meeting that I enjoy. Because guys, I, I kind of agree with you guys. I'm not the biggest fan of AA either. But, and it's like, you know, my dad the other day said, you know, you need like-minded people to talk to about this stuff. You know, you just don't, you don't have anybody to talk to, you know, you just have a whole bunch of addicts around you. Like, and that's not the best thing. Like you need people that are really trying to, and it's like, I told him, I have 700 people that I'm actually talking to on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 
you guys, like I talk to, I get such wisdom, such amazing advice from you guys. I have people that are commenting on my videos that have had 20, 30 years of sobriety. And you know, they've got to know something, man, because I've only been able to get to four months in the last like how many ever years, almost a decade now, man. That's the longest I've been able to get. And I have people like that that are giving me advice. You know, on it's it's beautiful, man. It really is. But I think that I'm gonna kind of transition it after that into like an AA, um, you know, type of deal, just a meeting, you know, a, a meeting or two a week that I enjoy that, you know, that I can get some personal interaction with some people. I think it would be good for me, man. So I'm going to be doing that. I've mentioned it before, man, but I go to a Bible study on Monday nights. It's actually at a tattoo shop guys, believe it or not. Uh, pretty, pretty cool, right? These are not your, I've, I've said it before, man. Like I'm not your typical judgmental Christian. That's not even really your, like, I don't want to get into this conversation, but like, they are some really, really cool people, man. Um, but I, I go to that on Mondays and that really helps me, man. Um, if you guys want to see a tattoo that I have real quick, when I said that I was the king of booze at one time, I really meant it. Check this, check this stupid tattoo out, guys. Look at that. Do you see that, guys? I have a King Boo tattooed on me with 24 on it because I got it when I was 24 years old. And you know, at the time, there was like a mixed meaning between that. I, I didn't just get it because I felt like I was the king of alcohol. This was a, that was just, I also got it because that was the first, um, Luigi's Mansion, if anybody knows who that, what that video game is, that was the first video game me and my brother ever beat together. So there was a double kind of like dual meaning to that. And I honestly, I want to get that covered up. I, I want to get that covered up. I don't want that on my leg anymore, man. I'm retired of the king of booze. I am no longer the king of booze, man. Now I'm the king of sobriety. I'm the king of helping other people. I'm the king of making YouTube videos and talking to you guys. Like, I don't want to be the king of booze no more. That that title can go to somebody else. But I, I don't want it anymore, man. But I thought that I could I could share that with you guys. So dumb, man. I should have never got that tattooed on me. Anyways, man, I, I actually posted on my uh, community the other day and I, I asked you guys if there was any topics that you wanted me to discuss. And a bunch of you guys, of course, commented and every single one of um, your suggest suggestions were amazing. Um, and since it's Friday, man, I know somebody commented and said, could you give some advice for the weekends? Man, I actually have a video on my channel talking about like some things that you can do to help yourself stay sober on the weekends. Don't drink this either, but, uh, <laughs> you can go check that out, man. I kind of give some advice because the weekends can be tough. I keep my keeping busy, man. Keeping busy on the weekends is is vital, or doing something fun that doesn't require drugs or alcohol. You know, get together with a sober friend. You know, there's all sorts of things. Go check out that video, though, man, because I did see that video or I did see that comment, and it is Friday, and every single one of your guys' comments were amazing. And I was actually going to ask you guys. I'm going to do a Q&A video for my next video. Um, so if any, please leave as many questions as you guys want to you can leave multiple questions down below please leave as many questions as you guys want ask me anything i'm an open book anything that you guys are curious about drop a comment down below and i'm going to answer it for my next video i thought that i could do that just to be able to cover a lot of these subjects in a, in a kind of a, a different manner instead of making videos on each and every single one of them um so yeah, man, if you have a question, please, 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 please drop a comment and I would be more than happy to answer it in the next video. Cause that is, that's going to be the next video guys is a Q and a, but I did want to, uh, go ahead and answer one of the, I wanted to make a video and answer one of the people's questions on here because I thought that it was a really good one and a really tough one. And he asked two questions. And so, man, I'm going to, I'm going to give you two, I'm going to answer both of your questions and give you a little bit of uh, something for both of them. Um, hopefully this video isn't super long, but, uh, Jeff B six, seven, seven, eight, eight said, talk about the feeling of not ever being able to, to drink again, or Talk about the feeling of not 
yeah, not drinking ever again. Man, that's a super, super tricky question. And, uh, you know, in early sobriety too, I think in a way that thought can be really unhealthy and it can actually, it could actually scare you and overwhelm you into a relapse. The thought of never being able to drink again, which is insane on the other hand, because alcohol, I mean, speaking personally, man, it's just, I can't begin to describe. I mean, it really has destroyed my life guys uh, to just sum it up real quickly. Um, it's destroyed my life. Like I'm picking up the pieces now, but it really has destroyed my life up until this point. The amount of stories, the amount of chaos, the amount of embarrassment, man. Uh, somebody said, you know, can you tell me an embarrassing story? Uh, yeah, I'm also gonna be making a video on one of the most embarrassing times ever. Um, let's just say it kind of involves me passing out in a passenger seat and I might've pissed myself. I'm just gonna leave it there. I'm not gonna get in, into any more detail, but yeah, man, exactly. Why would I Why would I miss that? Why would I miss going to the hospital? Why would I miss breaking my family's heart? Why would I miss killing myself? Why would I miss the embarrassment, the shame, the regret, the, the just downright darkness the de the delirium tremens, the withdrawal. Why would I ever, why would I miss that? I, you know, I should feel like, oh, I'm never gonna drink again. Hallelujah, praise God. I should be happy about that thought. But at the same time, guys, alcohol becomes our best friend. It really does. Alcohol becomes our best friend. Um, and then it becomes our worst enemy. And I've and listen to this, guys. This is something I was thinking about. Alcohol at first becomes your best friend and then it turns on you and ruins everything. And then it becomes your worst enemy. You hate alcohol, but then you wake up and you get off alcohol and you look around yourself and you finally wake up and realize all your, like most of your friends are gone. Uh, your money situation and financial situation is just destroyed. Like the destruction and the chaos and everything that you've caused causes such a bad depression and shame that alcohol then again becomes your best friend again. It's like we we cause all this destruction from our drinking and then what do we do to solve the sadness caused from our drinking? Well, we drink even more. And that's why it's such a disgusting cycle. It really is, man. It, it just, it plays on your emotions. Cunning, baffling, all of that stuff, man. It's why I've said before that I need to keep my guard up every single day and I'm sure that you guys do too. Um, I don't know, man. I, I take it day by day. A lot of us do. That's why we say, you know, one day at a time. That, there's a reason why that's a saying um, amongst the, so, the sober community. Because we really do have to take it day by day. Thinking about never, ever drinking again, ever again, it's just an overwhelming thought that I don't even want to get into. Maybe once I have like two or three years of sobriety under my belt, maybe I would feel comfortable saying that. But even then, I don't think so. I've met people in AA meetings and stuff that are, you know, 60, 70 years old that still say that they're not confident that they're never going to drink again. Um, there's actually a story of one of my counselors in the last IOP program that I was in. And she said that out where she was going to an AA meeting at, there was this guy that had been going to the, that AA group for like 30 or 40 years. And one day he came to the group and he said, I give up on this. I'm going to go drink. And literally this dude was so about AA. He was so about sobriety. He was such a, a good, you know, member of the community that people literally thought this dude was joking. They thought he was, this is what my counselor at this program told me. And a couple days later, they found out that he was dead. He drank himself to death. He literally went out and relapsed. Something happened that messed with him in his life. And he literally went out and relapsed and he drank himself to death. And this was a man who had 30, 40 years of sobriety. So to ever sit back and just be like, oh, I'm safe now, you know, oh, I'm good now, you know, like I don't have to worry about it. Like, you know, like I'm never gonna have a drink again and I'm confident. I mean, that's just, I've learned over time to stop saying that. Like I used to like promise everybody like, oh, I'm never gonna drink and it's just like, action, man, enough words, enough promises, just do it, just be about it. And 
and and because that's what your family that's what your friends that's what everybody who really loves you want wants to see they want to see action and for each and every single one of us man pulling ourselves out of that deep dark hole is different man and i know how hard it is especially when you're first trying to get sober because i've been in this rodeo now a few a few times and in ways it's harder at first and in ways it's not because i feel like each relapse like your hope gets dragged down a little bit more um i think that this the scary reality of it is for a lot of us is how many relapses do we have in us and i've thought about that man how many relapses do we have in us and some people say well relapse and relapse and relapse well it's like you know you might relapse until you end up accidentally killing yourself or you might relapse to the point that you literally give up you literally give up and that's why i think that counting the days and doing that stuff can be kind of dangerous um, because the, the, the hopelessness feeling that you get after you've messed up a long period of sobriety and you feel like, oh, well now I'm going back to day one, it can really mess with your head. Um, and that's why I've discussed like in my past videos on why that's important not to kind of like have that mindset on it. But yeah, man, my, my answer to that, Jeff, is that I take it day by day, man. I, I don't really think about that, you know, to be honest with you, I really don't, um, I really don't think about that thought very often. Um, I think me thinking that on a day-to-day -day basis might actually do me more harm than good. Uh, I live my day-to-day -day basis as if I'm never going to drink again, and that is my goal. Don't get me wrong for a second. That is 100% my goal, is to never, ever touch a drop of that poison ever again. But for me to be able to sit here and confidently say that I won't, I just can't. I just can't, guys. But, um... But yeah, take it, take it one day at a time. Take it one day at a time. That's what I do. I take it day by day. And that's, that's what work, works for me. I'll worry about today. I'll worry about now. Tomorrow will come when it comes. And the other thing that you said, man, was could you tell me another creepy story? Yeah, guys, I actually wanted to sh uh, tell you guys um, something real quick about, you know, I've shared before when I was in the hospital, I had some really bad... Uh, DTs, like the, the worst DTs that I ever had was in the hospital. And um, I said that a creature, when I was in DTs, a creature literally walked into my hospital room. And like, I woke up in the middle of the night, I've told this story before, um, but I actually think that like, I might've found the creature that walked in or that I saw. Just listen to me guys, I know this sounds absolutely insane, but I did some research on this because guys, I've done mushrooms. I've done, you know, I've tripped out. I, I've had insane, like psychedelic, you know, experiences before in my past. DTs make those feel like just nothing. Like I've said it before, but like, it's like, you're really seeing it as, as real as me looking at this cell phone right now. That's a, as real as what you see in DTs. And I remember I was laying in my, my hospital, my detox bed and I got up and I was looking around my room and I wasn't in sleep paralysis. This was DTs. I was 100% awake. I got up and I was looking around and I looked over at the door and there was a shadow underneath the door and it was getting closer and closer and closer. And the door swung open and this large, grotesque, just horrifying demon walked in. Uh, it was, it, it was, it was huge. And I remember it had a syringe in its left hand and like a sickle and chains like in, in coming off its other hand. And it, and it was coming towards me and it was walking towards me. And it, it was probably the most horrifying thing that I've ever seen in my entire life. I literally thought, I mean, my heart, I was probably close to a heart attack, to be honest, guys. I don't know if my heart has ever beat that fast in my entire life. i uh, and I remember here, there was noise to it too. It was like, like, I remember hearing some auditory noise to it as well when it was coming towards me and it was about to get me. And then I like turned my head and like, I like snapped myself out of it, thank God. And, um, but it was a horrifying experience. But anyways, I did some research on that creature. I just looked up fat demon. <laughs> and what I ended up finding out was that there actually is a uh, an obese like demon, and its name is the Batabat. 
the Badabat. And I actually printed a picture of, and there's a whole bunch of pictures of this thing online, but this is the closest, and it was way more horrifying than this. This doesn't even do it justice whatsoever at all. But this was the closest thing to what I could find online. And this is an actual picture of the Badabat demon. Is right here. You guys can see that. This is what it looked like. This is the closest thing to what I could find online to what it looked like. So I think it might have actually been this this creature. And listen to this, guys. Or this demon, I really should say, because it is a demon. Um, I also have this right here. This is what it says about the Badabat. The Badabat is a vengeful demon found in the Ilocano fol folklore. And the Ilo Ilocano is actually um, Philippines. And the crazy thing is, guys, and I guess this is another question. People are constantly asking me what I am. Are you Native American? Are you Asian? <laughs> kind of as a joke on the channel, I keep that a secret. One day I'm going to reveal it to you guys. Uh, but I kind of just think that it's a funny thing to do with the channel. Kind of make you guys guess what I am. <laughs> Maybe some of you have guessed right, who knows. But I will tell you guys this. Uh, my dad a long time ago, or a while back ago did like that 23 and one thing and figured out that I do have Filipino in me. Uh, it was this lady that, you know, one of my relatives ended up marrying and she ended up writing a book. She has a super interesting story, but I have Filipino in me. So I think that that's kind of interesting that this is uh, Ilocano folklore and I have that in my blood. Hmm. Just thought it was kind of interesting. Anyways, the Badabat takes form of an ancient, grotesquely obese, tree-dwelling female spirit. And that's exactly what it was. It was a grotesquely obese female. It was female. The demon was female uh, spirit. It was something that I would have seen in like a like an Elden Ring game or like, I don't know, like World of Warcraft. Like you would have seen this thing as like a final boss or something. I don't <laughs> you know what I'm saying. This is just something, this is something that you don't ever want to see, man. This is something you don't ever want to see. And it really makes you step back. And of course, like I've said, guys, I'm a Christian. I believe in like angels and demons and stuff, man. And I think that drugs and alcohol this is just my belief. I think that they can turn tune your brain into a certain frequency where you can you can literally see things that are around us at all times. But, you know, we have that filter over our every single day of reality. At least that's what I believe. If you don't believe that, that's a, that's okay. That's just what I believe from, you know, personal experience and stuff, man. Uh It really makes you wonder, man. It's some scary stuff, guys. And anybody who has been through uh alcohol withdrawal and DTs, even minor DTs, you guys know how dark it is. Um, of course, I've already made a video on that. Uh, so you guys can go check out, is alcohol demonic? But I did want to answer that question and I wanted to tell you guys that, yeah, man, I think this is the creature that I saw. So if you want to do some more research on that, you can. Uh, yeah, man, a vengeful demon. Who knows, man? It's like, it's like we open the gates of hell. It, it really is. When you drink enough liquor, man, you got to drink a sh ton. But if you drink enough, man, it's like you you open up a portal. But yeah, guys, uh, I think I'm going to end the video here. Um, I'm going to try and get a video up tomorrow. Uh, and if not, maybe the next day. And I'm going to try and have a, a more consistent upload schedule moving forward. I don't like waiting. I miss you guys, man. I don't like waiting like six seven days before I upload. I just don't like that. Um, I'll find the time and I'll make it happen for you guys because I, I love you guys. So yeah, man, um, I'm sorry if this video is kind of all over the place, but uh, again, if you want, please uh, leave a comment below for the next video, the Q and A video that I'm gonna do, and I will 100% answer your question. Again, you can pretty much ask anything. I'm an open book. I will tell you guys, and I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, also, when I uh, reach a thousand subscribers, which hopefully will be soon, uh, we're gonna be going live, man. We're gonna be doing lives. I think those are gonna be a lot of fun. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun on the lives together, guys. And yeah, man, just a lot of positive stuff, guys. Two weeks sober tomorrow. I know a few of you guys, you know, like I said, uh, I don't know if I said or not, but um, a few of you guys said that I shouldn't, you know, be count recounting the days. I should start exactly where I was. I understand that guys and I appreciate 
you know, you guys who said that. I love you guys who said that I shouldn't, you know, start to recount. Um, but at the same time, I did relapse, you know. Um, it is what it is. I'm going to get... It, it is what it is. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be stronger than ever, man. So, yeah, guys. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Please have a safe, um, sober, fun weekend, you know. Don't do anything crazy. Uh, keep busy. Keeping busy on the weekend, man, is, is crucial. And yeah, man, I'll see you guys real soon. Drop a comment with a question for the next video. Um, yeah, man, I love you guys. I'll see y'all real soon. And uh, until next time, guys, stay safe, stay sober, and peace.